Hey folks, Gwei. I was away for a couple of days. I was out camping. I had a great opportunity to be out there and be near the water and to be in the forest and, you know, to wake up to beautiful sunrises, to, to go to sleep with beautiful sunsets. I was able to wake up and be completely immersed in the thickest fog. I was able to listen to the squirrels and the chipmunks fight over acorns. I was able to listen to the birds sing at one another. It's good being out there. I, it does my heart good being out in nature, especially the woods or on the water. It does my heart a great deal of good. I mean, when I'm on the water, I can, it's, it's a strange thing, but when I'm on the water and I'm sailing my laser or my albacore, I, in heavy winds, you look up and you see this, this, well, this piece of metal, right? This piece of metal being formed by the strength of the wind, like literally bending by the power that the wind is, is, is placing upon it. I feel connected to God in those moments. I feel connected to God when I feel the sun on me. I feel connected to God when I can smell the pine, smell the dirt, hear the noises See the stars? You know, there's a lot of people out there who, who might deny climate change. A lot of Christians out there who might deny climate change. People who don't see climate change as a big issue because God's going to come, come one day and just make everything right anyway. We fail to remember that it's through nature through the natural habitat that God first spoke to people. It was through creation that God first made themselves visible, perceivable, recognizable to the world. And not just in one corner of the world, no, 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 no. Throughout the entirety of the world, nature was God's first medium of choice. That's how God chose. That's how God chose to let humanity know that God is present. It was through the trees and through the rocks and through the deserts, through the water, the streams, through the animals, the fish, the sky the mountains, it's, that's how God, that's how God first chose to say, hey, now I, you know, people are going to want to know some scripture on that. Well, in the first chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans, now we've talked about this chapter from time to time, and oft, more often than not, we've talked about this chapter from the perspective of sinner, right? That like God's vengeance is coming, God's wrath is coming upon the sinful. But in chapter 1, there's a verse. And that verse is almost a throwaway verse. I don't think we spend near as much time contemplating it as we should. It's verse 20. So again, it's in between all this talk of wrath and, and anger and sin. And verse 20 says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities... His external power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. God has always been perceivable through creation. And God made it this way. We don't give this verse near as much time as we should. In the world today, I mean, if you're watching the news at all, we've got major rivers drying up. We have cities going without water. We have huge, massive forest fires burning. We have extreme temperatures happening all over the place. 
It doesn't take much to look around and say, yep, the climate's changing. But then I stumbled across a couple of videos, a channel actually, and then some other videos because of it, but I'll include a couple of links in the comments. One of the videos that I watched was about that famous concrete river in LA. You know, the one that's in all the movies, they race the cars through it with the helicopters chasing. The video was about an effort that is being made to alter that concrete river. Because every year they estimate they, they lose, they miss out on the opportunity to gather 20 to 30 billion, billion with a B, gallons of fresh water. Big major storms hit, rain drops, rain water is fresh water, that rain drops, is poured into the, is emptied into the river and goes down the river out into the Pacific Ocean. Goes down those concrete walls out into the Pacific Ocean. So what they've been doing is they've been adjusting the river. They've been adding things like rocks and vegetation. They've been making places where the water could pool. They've made places where the water could flood over the banks. They've created parks and green spaces. And Seoul, South Korea, is doing the same thing. Apparently, they, there was a river that ran through the middle of the city, a very small river, but it ran through the middle of the city, and it became, they didn't really want it. They needed to put a highway in, so they covered it. They encased it in concrete, and they put a highway over top of it. But over the last 40 or 50 years, as that highway has crumbled, they've decided, well, we're not going to bother rebuilding it. We're going we're to let the river breathe again. And so all along this very small what used to be considered insignificant river, they've created green space. And it's improved the quality of the lives of the people who live there. They've brought in, they've brought in species have returned to this small patch, this small wonderful patch of greenery, of flowers and trees and grass. It's easy to get down about the environment. It's easy to get down about climate change and we do need to be very aware that it's happening. But there are moments of hope. There are experiences, there are events that are transpiring right now that can give us hope. And, and for the Christians out there, especially for those Christians who want to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, those Christians out there who want to share God with the entire world, this kind of work, this, these kinds of restorative works, these kinds of projects where we bring nature back into the middle of our cities where we did not want nature in the past, we bring that vibrancy and color and those sounds and those smells back into the midst of our, of our urban world. Bringing God back. We're bringing, not that God ever left, but we're bringing back this way that God chose to speak to all of humanity without words, without scripture, without church, without religious communities, just the way God chose to spoke with all humanity wherever they happen to be found. We're bringing with these green spaces, we're bringing the voice of God back. The original voice of God back. If you are a Christian out there and you do see the need, see the importance of sharing the gospel and of sharing God with the whole world, these kinds of projects are the work of evangelists. Not the evangelists that you might find on the street corner yelling at people and shouting about their condemnation and demanding that they repent in order to be saved, but the work of an evangelist who is simply trying to remove the barriers that we have, we for the most part, have put in place that keep people from hearing that pure, essential voice of the one who created them. 
May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray that you and I could, could participate in some of these endeavors. That we could be communities of people who are trying to amplify God's voice by removing those things that have kept nature at bay by restoring corners of our world to their full glory, their full natural, luscious, green, vibrant glory. Amen. Numultus.